Hello, everyone. My name is Andy Hall, Senior Partner Solutions Architect with Amazon Web Services. And I'm going to show you how to use the AWS Toolkit for Visual Studio to choose different deployment options for a .NET application to AWS Elastic Beanstalk. I'm going to cover options such as configuring your deployment for a specific Amazon Virtual Private Cloud or VPC, how to add an Elastic Load Balancer or ELB, and how to configure your deployment to use existing Amazon Relational Database or RDS instance. Here I have a solution that I created previously. This solution contains a .NET Framework application using .NET Framework 4.8. In order to use the AWS Toolkit for Visual Studio to deploy my application to AWS Elastic Beanstalk, I made sure that the latest version of the AWS Toolkit for Visual Studio is installed and configured. If you don't have it installed, you can download it from the displayed link. Along with installing the latest version of the AWS Toolkit for Visual Studio, I also made sure that my AWS credentials are set up correctly to allow for deployment. To do this, please follow the documentation available from the link displayed. As you can see, I have a simple .NET Framework Web MVC application as my project. In order to deploy this project to Elastic Beanstalk, all that I'm going to do is right-click on the project and select the Publish to Elastic Beanstalk menu item. When I do this, the Elastic Beanstalk deployment wizard is displayed. I'm going to use this wizard to show you how to configure a number of options for your application when deploying to Elastic Beanstalk. On the first screen in the wizard, there are a few options to configure which account profile to use to deploy my application, and if I'm deploying a new application or redeploying an existing application. Since this is the first deployment for this application and I set up the account profile previously, I'm just going to click the Next button. Since I can have multiple environments for my application, the wizard displays the option to pick which environment I want to use. Following industry best practices, I'm only going to deploy my application to the development environment. In order to ensure that this is the case, I select the dev environment from the dropdown. Since this is a web application and I want it externally available, the wizard will pre-populate a URL that my application will be available at. In order to make sure that the URL is available, I can click on the Check Availability button. If my URL was not available, I can change the value to some unique name and click the Check Availability button to verify that the URL is not in use. Once I'm sure that my URL is available, I click on the Next button to continue with the configuration. On the AWS Options screen in the wizard, I have the ability to change a number of options for my application. I can select the type of container that I want to run my application in. For example, if I want to run my application on a 64-bit Windows Server 2019 instance running IIS 10. I can also specify the Amazon Elastic Cloud Compute or EC2 instance type and the Amazon Machine Image or AMI that I want to use. For my application, all the default values are what I need. Since I have a specific VPC that I want to use, I'm going to make sure that the Use Non-Default VPC option is checked. If I didn't check this, the default VPC in my AWS account would be used for this deployment. By checking this option, I'll be able to specify which VPC that I want to use later in the wizard. In following good design patterns, I'd like to make sure that my application sits behind an elastic load balancer. By making sure that the single instance environment is not checked, I can specify which type of elastic load balancer that I want to configure for my application. Now I am able to select the type of load balancer, including application load balancer, network load balancer, or classic load balancer. 
For the purposes of my application, I'm going to use an application load balancer, which is the first option in the dropdown. I will have to configure which VPC and subnets that my new application load balancer will use later in the wizard. Since I have an existing Amazon RDS for SQL Server based instance configured in my AWS account, I want to make sure that my application will use this database. To make sure that this occurs, I will have to specify the security groups for the Amazon RDS instance that should be modified by the wizard in order for my application to use the database instance. Security groups act as firewalls within my AWS account to limit network traffic to resources in my AWS account, such as my Amazon RDS for SQL Server database. To continue with the configuration of my application, I click the Next button, which will allow me to configure additional options for my application, like which VPC and which subnets to use. On the VPC options screen of the wizard, I can specify the VPC that I want to use. Previously, I set up a non-default VPC in my AWS account. If you would like to do the same, you can follow the steps outlined in the displayed link. In the case of my application, I want to use an existing VPC called workshop.net development. Using the VPC dropdown, I find the VPC with the correct name and select it. Now that I've selected the correct VPC, I'll need to specify which security group that I want to use in order to allow access to my application. Since I want to allow anyone in my company to access the application, I will set the security group to the one called .NET Applications. This security group was set up beforehand and allows individuals within a specific IP address range for my company in order to access the applications on both port 80 and 8080. I have the option of making my elastic load balancer either public to the greater network or just internal. For purposes of my application, I'm going to set this to public since I have a security group in place that will restrict access anyways. Since the default value for the elastic load balancer scheme is public, I will leave this value alone. Since I specified that I want to use an elastic load balancer, I need to tell the wizard which subnets should be used. In order to find the correct subnets, I went to the AWS Management Console to view the subnets under my VPC. Using this list, I was able to determine which of the public subnets that I needed to host my elastic load balancer. At this point, I'm going to specify the public subnets from the dropdown list. Since my application will be deployed to a new Amazon EC2 instance, I'll need to tell the wizard which subnets in my VPC should be used to run these new Amazon EC2 instances. Using the AWS Management Console, I was able to view the subnets for my VPC and determine the IDs for the subnets that I wanted to use. At this point, I'm going to specify the subnets from the dropdown list. At this point, I have my application set up to use a specific Amazon RDS instance, an application load balancer, a specific VPC, and subnets when the application is deployed to Elastic Beanstalk using the AWS Toolkit for Visual Studio. At this point, I have my application set up to use a specific Amazon RDS instance, an application load balancer, and a specific VPC and subnets when the application is deployed to Elastic Beanstalk. By clicking the Next button, we'll be able to set the appropriate permissions that are necessary for my application. In this particular case, the default values that are provided by the wizard are sufficient for my application. So we're going to then go ahead and click Next to move to Application Options. At this point in the wizard, I can pick various options about my application, including the build configuration, the runtime, and any additional environmental variables that I need to set on up. Since the default values are going to be good enough for my application, I'm just going to go ahead and click Next.
At this point in the wizard, you're displayed with the ability to review all the choices that you made previously. Since I'm good with all the values that were supplied, I'm just going to go ahead and click Deploy. While the application is deploying to Elastic Beanstalk, all the various events that occur um, through the deployment process are displayed for you through the AWS Toolkit for Visual Studio. That would include things such as setting up EC2 instances, setting up various roles and permissions, additionally, setting up the elastic load balancers, and making modifications to the security groups that we had earlier specified. When my application has been successfully set up on Elastic Beanstalk and fully deployed, I will have an event stating such. In this particular case, we'll see one that says successfully launched environment and the name of our environment. At this point, I can hit the URL that, will, that points to the elastic load balancer that sits in front of my application. My application comes on up and I'm able to navigate the application and view the information that sits within the database. Thank you for watching and I hope that you found this video helpful.